unit test is in four part, part 1, part 2, part 3, and part 4. Now look at part 1. Part 1. You'll hear a conversation between two students in the dining hall of the college. First, you have some time to read questions 1 to 4. Now listen carefully to the conversation and answer questions 1 to 4. Hi Max, how are you? Hi Melanie, I'm fine. In fact, I'm preparing the coming holidays and I want to have a car tour with my friends. That sounds lovely. How is your preparation? Well, I haven't begun yet because I'm not quite sure how to rent a car and what the expense is like and something like this. Ha! <laughs> You've run into the right person. I did the same last holiday, and I can recommend it to you. I went to Avis Rent-A-Car Company, which is at 14A Dover Road, Oxford. Let me write it down. Is it D-O-V-E-R? Yes, and the telephone number is 6340963. But if you book for the first time, dial another number with extension. That is 6340853. Extension 54. OK, thank you very much. I'll have a try. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to read questions 5 to 10. Now listen to the conversation between Max and the assistant and answer questions 5 to 10. Good morning, Avis Rent-A-Car Company. How can I help you? Hi, I want to book a car for tour. I want to inquire some information about the grade of the cars and the prices. No problem. We offer a wide selection of rental cars to choose from, from luxury car to economy car, compact car, minivan and pickup truck. Well, uh, luxury car is obviously out of my price range, but compact or economy is not big enough. You know, we have seven persons together. Well, how about a minivan? It's perfect for road trips and will make your journey feel like you're in a living room on wheels. I think that's good. Well, what does it feature? I, I mean, what facilities does it have? Unlike most minivans with manual transmission, the rental minivan cars have feature automatic transmission, air conditioning and AM-FM stereo. If you drive a long, smooth way, you can use the cruise control, which will save you a lot of energy. Good. How much is the price? If you rent an intermediate one, it will cost you £55 each day. If it is standard, the cost is £45 per day. I think the standard is enough. Oh, we have a special 50% discount for weekends, from Friday to Sunday. But that doesn't apply to tax, recovery fees and optional services. Well, what are the optional services? Well, they usually include some extra facilities, like first aid kit or something like that. Uh, I know. We plan to start off on Friday, so we have to prepare one day in advance. I want to book from 30th of April, which is Thursday. And it will end next Monday. OK. Could you leave your name and the driving licence number? My name is Max, and the licence number is M9021. OK. You can pick up the car on Thursday noon. Besides, we offer some optional services like street maps, flashlight and sunsheet. What would you like to have? Mm, flashlight is not necessary, I think. But street maps are useful, especially when we drive in a strange place. As for the sun sheet, I'd like to give that a miss. We don't want to spend too much extra money. OK, Mr Max, thank you for calling. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a library assistant talking about the library she works in. You now have thirty seconds to read questions eleven to fifteen. Hi, can I help you? Um, yes, I wanted to join the library. Okay. First of all, let me show you round the library and explain a few things for you. Okay. Now we're here at the main entrance. You can see the reception, which is where you bring back and take out books, and also we can order books and answer your questions there. Mhm.、Uh -huh. Next to the reception, where you can see those old desks, is where we keep the magazines because you can sit down and read there. They're divided into sections for sciences, geography, arts, etc.、Uh, then, at the back of the library, you can see the section for old books. Next to that is where the books proper start. That used to be the science section. But now on those shelves, you'll find the art section. We had a big reorganisation in the summer, which I think has made it clearer.、Oh. <laughs> the numbering is standard, so you should be able to find what you want quite easily. However, if you can't find something, it probably means it's been borrowed. Okay, then in the corner next to the reference section. Is where we thought it was quietest, and away from the phones and printers and things. So we've put the study desks there. They all have computer access if you need it for your laptop. No.、Oh. We do ask that you don't just read magazines there, though. Okay.、Uh, then there's the reference section, where you can look up the files. Then, as we come back to the main entrance. Is the next section where we used to have the languages? It got very busy and noisy, so when we moved everything round, we decided to put the law books here. Also, because it's a smaller section, it fits quite well here.、Ah. Okay, then we're back at the main entrance. Over there, by reception, there's a door that goes to the extension. And we have further sections such as languages and study desks through there. So you could have a look round when we've finished. Then, just between reception and the door here, is where we decided to put the computers. But the computer magazines are in the magazine section, as we found too many went missing here.、Oh. <laughs> okay, is that everything? You now have thirty seconds to read questions sixteen to twenty. That's great, thanks. Can you just tell me a bit about borrowing and the rules and whatever? Of course. Over the last two months, we've been introducing a new system for this, and you can now take books out for six weeks. That's generally enough for most people. We usually get books back within thirty days. Of course, you may decide to renew the period. You used to have to come in to get the book stamped, because we don't like doing it over the phone, as there's no record of it. But now you can do all that via email. Oh. 
If you do forget to renew, then we do make a charge, I'm afraid. That helps our costs, of course, but we do insist on it. The good news is that there is only one charge. I know some libraries charge one pound for one week and then it goes up with each week it's late. We ask for one pound fifty, as we think that's high enough to stop people being overdue. <laughs> the other thing you may want to know is what you do about books that are not on the shelves. We do have a system for reserving them. All you have to do is fill in a yellow form behind those blue ones on the desk、uh-huh. and give it to someone at reception. We'll let you know when it comes in. Also, sometimes you will need a journal article that we don't have but can get from other libraries. So we offer an ordering service if you need it. Now, if you'd like to fill in this form here. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear some students discussing an assignment. Listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-four. Well, Fiona, we certainly have a lot of work to do this weekend.、Mm. I wish now I hadn't spent so much time on my other assignment. Don't say that. You did really well, eighty percent. Yes, but this is different. It's not hard, really. It's just all a bit of a rush. We had loads of time to get the other one right, but this one is all a bit pressured. That's what makes me anxious, despite the preparation we've done. You shouldn't worry. What could go wrong? Look, let's look through what we can do to make sure it's okay. Well, the main difficulty that's bothering me is about defining the terms of reference.、Mm. It's supposed to be about approaches to social welfare, right? Yes, but we're not expected to give a survey of what that means. That's not the point. We're supposed to be comparing the way welfare is approached in collectivist societies and what you might call capitalist societies. So we can concentrate on just that contrast. Yes. The other thing that bothers me is that I'm not really committed to either view. Well, I have strong opinions of my own, but that's not supposed to colour my judgement. How do you mean? Well, what you write for this is supposed to be unbiased. It specifically says that you shouldn't give a personal view. But Professor Green has a personal view. Yes, but that doesn't mean that we have to agree with him, and I don't think we'll do any better if we do. And how long does it have to be? The maximum is four thousand words. What? But that's the maximum. We'll probably end up with about three, but at least two thousand is the minimum. Shouldn't be a problem. Hmm. Okay. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions twenty-five to thirty. Now answer questions twenty-five to thirty. Now, where can we get some information on all this? Well, we could ask Olive over there. Olive.
You did this assignment last year, didn't you? Not this one exactly, but something similar. The most important thing is to get Professor Green's lectures on the welfare state. Is he good? Oh, very good. Didn't you know he was lecturing? No, no idea. Well, he is. He's at the Beckett Building on Tuesdays. I think he's starting this week, so you'll be able to get the series of six. He deals with the underlying philosophy as well as the economics of it all. It's at ten a.m. I'd go myself, except that I have too much to do. And what about reading? I've got the reading list here. As usual, it has far more titles and references than we can possibly read in the time. I haven't even got a reading list. Where did you get that from, Mike? I got it at the welcome lecture. Oh, I wish I'd gone to that now. What you need above all is his own book called Welfare Economics. All the department know it and follow his approach. Oh, right. Good idea. Perhaps we don't need to go to the lecture if we have his book. No, I really do advise you to go to his lectures as well. Well, what was the full title of his book?、Mm, if I remember rightly, it's called simply Welfare Economics by Mike Green.、Mm. I've got it. Welfare Economics, Glenfield University Press, two thousand and six. Great. Let me just write that down. Anything else you recommend?、Uh, there's Edward Jones's book.、Um, Growing old in Britain. That's essential reading, but you have to be careful because it's a popular book by a journalist. Well, if it's popular, maybe we'll like it. Who publishes that? That's published by Rutland University Press in two thousand and five. Well, that's very useful. I think it's Professor Green for us next. Right. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute. To check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a talk about the pitfalls and pleasures of being a postgraduate student. Look at questions thirty-two to thirty-seven. Postgraduates are about as easy to define as catching steam in a bucket. Courses can be vocational, for training, as research, as a preparation for research, or a combination of these. Also, you can choose between full-time and part-time. Increasingly, the approach to postgraduate study is becoming modular. The vast majority of postgraduates are doing short, taught courses. Many of which provide specific vocational training. Indeed, there has been a 400% increase in postgraduate numbers in Britain over the past 20 years. Current figures stand at just under 400,000. People undertake postgraduate study for many reasons. These may be academic, intellectual challenge, development of knowledge, vocational, training for a specific career goal, or only vague. Drifting into further study, it is essential that you determine the reasons you want to become a postgraduate. If you have clear goals and reasons for studying, this will enhance your learning experience and help you to remain focused and motivated throughout your course. Where you study should be based on much more than the course you want to do. For some courses, you're likely to be there for several years. And it is important that you are happy living there. 
Check also what type of accommodation is available and whether the institution provides any housing specifically for postgraduates. Choosing an institution and department is a difficult process. To determine quality, do not rely on the reputation of an institution, but find out what the ratings are from the most recent assessment exercises. Find out about the staff, their reputation, competence, enthusiasm and friendliness. Visit the department if possible and talk to existing postgraduates about their experience, satisfaction, comments and complaints. Be very careful to check how they feel about their supervisors. Also, check what facilities are available, both at an institutional level, for example libraries, laboratory and computing facilities, and in the department, for example study room, desk, photocopying, secretarial support, etc. Everyone will have their own priorities here. I am always anxious to check the computer support available and regard it as slightly more important than library access. Your working environment and the support available to you plays an essential part in making your work as a postgraduate a positive experience. Life as a postgraduate can be very different to your other experiences of education. Things that can distinguish your experience are the level of study, independence of working, intensity of the course, the demands on your time, and often the fact that you're older than the majority of students. These factors can contribute to making you feel isolated. However, there are several ways you can make sure that this is either short-lived or does not happen at all. Many student unions have postgraduate societies that organize social events and may also provide representation for postgraduates to both the student union and the institution. Departments can also help to create a sense of identity and community and often have discussion groups available. Don't be afraid to talk to staff about any difficulties you might be having. Of course universities provide counselling services but we have found that the best advice comes from talking to other postgraduates who may have faced similar difficulties. Look at questions 38 to 40. Financial planning is essential since the government excludes postgraduates from student loans and it can be difficult to maintain your student status with banks. This has implications for free banking and overdraft facilities. Do not underestimate your living costs including food, accommodation and travel and be careful not to budget for everything except a social life. Funding a course is one of the most challenging things people face when considering postgraduate study. Most postgraduate students finance themselves. They pay often very large fees to the institution and receive no maintenance income to support their study. Make sure you know exactly what your costs will be. Institutions often hide extra fees, like laboratory costs, behind the headline fee rate advertised. Funding can come from various sources research councils, charities, trust funds, institutional scholarships, local education authorities and professional bodies and organisations all offer various levels of funding. As I said before, the government excludes postgraduates from student loans, so it is essential you look to other sources. Career development loans are available from high street banks. The best advice on funding is to be proactive, persistent and patient. The postgraduate community in Britain is multinational, has a wide range of experience of life and work and an exciting mix of goals, both career and academic. Being a postgraduate student should be a productive and fulfilling thing to do and you will become part of a diverse and motivated school.